But right now I'd like to introduce the two West Bend District 2 primary election candidates, Jeremy Hahn and Chris Thompson. Incumbent Mark Allen has declined an offer to participate tonight, but said you can reach him at 262-429-1318 if you have any questions. Um, tonight the candidates are asked to speak about themselves, not any of their opponents. Candidates will be given three minutes for the opening statement and three minutes to answer questions, otherwise, unless otherwise given a longer time. Uh, if we need to have a follow-up question, I'll decide on that, and then each candidate will be allowed to answer that. With one, re with one minute remaining in the answer, Dave will hold up the yellow sheet of paper. That'll signal you have one minute to go, and when he holds up the red sheet, that means your time's up, stop. And candidates will be given two minutes for their closing statement. The candidates agree to this format? All right. We did odd and odd and even to decide who speaks first. Chris Thompson will be answering the first question, and it's a simple introduce yourself and why you are running. I'm going to stand up. Um, Good evening. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for coming out tonight uh, to hear us out. I think it's awesome that we have so much participation in the community. That's cool. Um, and also thank you, Bernie and the CSC, for, for holding this event and giving us an opportunity to, to speak our piece. My name is Chris Thompson, um, and I'm running for the District 2 Alderman seat here in the city of West Bend. Um, I have been, been a bit of background on myself. I've been a resident of West Bend for over 15 years, resident of the district in District 2 for over five. Um, my wife and I, Chad, have been married for uh, coming on 17 years, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> we came up here from uh, Milwaukee, actually. And the story is we came up to visit some friends uh, for a weekend and fell in love with the place. We're not running on the house that weekend and moved up a couple months later, so we've been here ever since. We've got two kids, um, my daughter's 15, my son's 11, both students in the district. And we love West Bend. We love it here. Uh, this is our home and it's our community. We, we've loved uh, being part of it. So, um, quickly, a um, little on my career. Uh, I've been working in some level of manufacturing for the last 13 years. It started when I was working as a bagger in third shift on the carry plant down in Jackson. I uh, worked my way up through the ranks and now I'm marketing manager for Johnson Controls. Uh, so, uh, I love being in manufacturing. I love Wisconsin based businesses. I love this area, so I'm very committed to that. I'm also not a politician. Uh, this is my first time doing anything like this. Uh, and, uh, but I also take a high interest in things going on in the community. I've been known to show up for uh, community events such as CSC or common council meetings, school board meetings, that sort of thing. Um, why I'm running uh, is basically I've had some concerns lately. Uh, the last couple of years, um, the Common Council has voted to increase our property taxes, and um, I also think that it's every citizen's duty uh, to perform public service, whether that's running for office or sitting on a board or volunteering or even just casting your vote. Well, this opportunity came my way and I just couldn't pass it up. So that's why I'm out here tonight. Um, that's why I'm running for a District 2 Alderman. And what you can count on for me, uh, if you vote for me in the upcoming primary, is that um, you know I don't think it's right for us to be passing property taxes uh, increases uh, during the pandemic. So I'm trying to hold the line uh, with budgeting because that's a big part of what the Common Council's responsibilities is, is to manage the budget for the city. Um, my philosophy is to always look at raising taxes as a last resort. That's how we operate in our household. Um, Jen knows that you know, my question is, do we need it? If we need it, well, we'll find the money for it. But you know, probably it's not going to be from you know, raising taxes, at least not as a uh, first resort. So. Uh, secondly is, um, promoting uh, business in the community. We're big advocates of uh, business in the community. We love going to the farmer's market. We love supporting local businesses downtown. Um, and they've been really struggling lately. Um, so I think uh, the Common Council, you know, in the capacity that they can, you know, I'm gonna do my part to try to promote and, uh, or at least not stand in the way of uh, driving business traffic to our city to try to revitalize some of these businesses that have been struggling so hard over the last year or so. And finally, public safety um, is another platform of mine. Um, we actually have a great city. We have a lot of enforcement officers do a wonderful job. Um, but it, public safety remains a top concern in all the surveys that go out across the city. So um, I have you know, a high interest in just holding the line uh, 
on that as well. In whatever capacity the county council is able to, to enable our law enforcement officers to do what they need to do to keep our community a, a safe and fun place to live, work, and play. And that's it. Thank you very much. All right, my name is Jeremy Hahn. Just wanted to thank you guys for all coming out tonight. As you can see, this is also my first go of politics. I have a very cream sign there. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in West Bend. Uh, my parents have a house up on Spent Lake. It's just north of uh, Lighthouse Lanes, now Cal Marina Pines. Uh, my dad was a projectionist in the theater when he was young. All my childhood memories are here. I remember running around, talking with Mr. Mead. He had these bags full of pennies. And there's always so much to do downtown West Bend. We had an actual mall. The bridge went to the mall. And I always look forward every single year to Massillon Street days. My dad had this popcorn truck we'd set up. We sell popcorn, cotton candy. I get my money. I go over to the candy man. And just West Bend, like now, there's just a lot going on. We we're very good with business, but it wasn't always that way. When I graduated from Marquette University in 2001, there wasn't a whole lot left. A few years later, the downtown theater closed, the arcade closed, and I want to prevent that from happening again. Um, I'm invested in the community. I'm a business owner. Um, I just want to make sure that doesn't happen, that we can do great things for West Bend. Um, I'm a good listener. I know we have a lot going on in this district. Like we have a quick trip that's being built. That's going to cause potential traffic issues for people. You know, any other concerns that come up, I don't know what they are, but that's why I rely on all of you. You can come to me, let me know what the issues are, and I'll do my best to address them. So. Hopefully I can do that, get your vote, and help you out. All right, District, District 2 includes the downtown area. It has seen a lot of improvements over the last 10 years. Most of these improvements have been achieved through a combination of municipal funds and donated funds. Are you committed to seeking additional funds from the private sector to continue the projects? And if so, how would you do that? Well, I think it's important that we stick together as a community and help out. In the private sector, we are responsible for helping. Uh, we're going to be putting together a food drive for downtown, but I'm all up for trying to collect revenue in, in any way that we see fit. You know, I think that West Bend is a very close-knit community, and we need to stick together. In any way that I can help raise funds through the private sector, I'm willing to do that, because then it's, we're not relying on tax dollars to pay for things that we can just pay for on our own. Um, my answer is not going to be a whole lot different than, uh, than Jeremy's. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we have a commitment uh, at a municipal level to take care of uh, you know our downtown area. Um, but at the same time, we are a tight knit community, and um, whatever the limits of what the municipality is able to do um, uh, are reached. You know, at some point, we've got to uh, go out to the community and, and ask for some help, especially in you know, unprecedented times, I think it's going to be important um, that we be in lockstep with members of the community on um, understanding what our goals are, uh, where, we, where we would like to ideally be, and understanding where that, uh, where that actually is uh, as it relates to what our budgetary capabilities are from a municipality standpoint. And if it's above and beyond that, then we know we have to do something. We have some great organizations that work with downtown, we have the downtown associations, um, there's also the bid uh, that's involved on um, trying to generate and, and, and drive uh, policy to the downtown area. So um, I would absolutely take an interest in that. I would want to hear from the community members on what their opinions are, what we need to do based on what we need, and what we know we need, and what, what our limitations are. This is a two-part question. The last two years saw an increase in taxes. Would you have supported these increases? Second part of the question is, do you believe it is the city staff's job to formulate the budget, or if elected, would you play a role, an active role, in developing it, its goals, and communicating it to the public early in the process? So, as I mentioned in my opening statement, yes, the, the budget uh, 
past two increases in the last two years. The last time was in November during the pandemic. Um, so to your first part question, no, I would not have supported that, especially because um, ever since I've thrown my hat in the ring, let's uh, run for aldermen. I've been meeting with a lot of the, the city um, uh, the city leaders, uh, both mayors, Mayor Jenkins, and also former Mayor Sadako, to understand what's going on. Uh, former alderman, um, alderman Megan Kennedy is in the uh, crowd tonight as well. Um, just to get an understanding of like how did we get here, what happened, um, and suffice to say, I think you know based on what I heard and you know, under, you know learned when I'm talking to people, um, what I found is that there were some alternative solutions other than raising taxes, and um, those just for some reason or another just didn't seem to uh, to. To make it through, so um, I would commit as an alderman to making sure that we exhaust every possible alternative to raising taxes in our city. Number one, um, and also to your second question, that's how I operate. Uh, everybody knows me and the work that I do, or my home life and stuff. I just I own my projects. I don't want to just pass them off or be a rubber stamp committee. I'm committed to wanting to understand at a molecular level what's going on in our town. And um, if I don't know, then I go find people who do know and I find out and I, and I learn. So um, I would absolutely commit to wanting to understand how the sausage gets made and, uh, and try to do my part uh, to, you know, to hold the line or, or change that if need be. Uh, I would absolutely agree with that. I mean, especially during a pandemic, we don't want to raise taxes. That's just, it's really hard on people. So if there are other ways that we can look to generate revenue, uh, I would be all up for that. I know I don't have a lot of experience. I have no experience in politics. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. But I'm a business owner. I learned web design on my own. I think if I put my mind to anything with enough time, I can learn it. And the nice thing I've learned about West Bend is everyone's willing to help you. It's not like you're being thrown out to the wolves and you have to figure this out on your own. You can talk with other aldermen, talk with the mayor, Learn the system. I think that given the opportunity, that I would be in a good capacity to help. 